Lady Esther, from USA, is asthmatic for 32 years. At the same time, she has got pain in the neck and in the back for now 17 years. Healing is going on for her in Jesus' mighty name. Clap, clap for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. The miraculous touch of God's power upon Lady Esther Macro from Hawaii in USA resulted into complete healing from her 17 agonizing years of pain. After prayer by Prophet Samo Kakande, witness as she joyfully testifies. My name is Esther Wilhelm McGrew from Nanakuli, Hawaii. <laughs> One of the many problems that brought me to Kukande ministry was that I actually had severe back pain for 17 years. I was injured in a hit and run car accident and I was bedridden. They said I had spinal stenosis. They said that I wasn't a candidate for surgery because the discs that were bulging was too close to my spinal cord. The pain was so great and being bedridden after being very active was very hard for me. I couldn't walk, I couldn't sleep without pain. They gave me a lot of medications. They gave me a lot of cortisone shots and the needles are very, they're about this size. And the shots were supposed to prevent pain for about 30 days. When I would get a shot, in three days, I would be in pain again. That's how bad my back was. Because I couldn't work anymore, my house went into foreclosure and I lost my apartment. My marriage suffered. I wasn't the wife that my husband at the time married. I couldn't do things with my friends. I couldn't serve in the church the way I did. And I just stayed home and laid up in bed. Because I was bedridden for the first year, I developed bed sores. And the medicine they were giving me had a lot of side effects. It caused visionary migraines and a lot of other complications. So that being said, I didn't have any um, idea what I was going to do next, but I do, because I read my Bible, believe in miracles. I wasn't intending to be bedridden. I would force myself to get up and I would force myself to walk and do things. Eventually, I started walking with a cane, which was really humiliating to me because I was still young. And having a cane was not fashionable. And it was very humiliating when people would ask me, why are you walking like an old woman? And I would tell them, I feel like I'm 80. <laughs> and that wasn't the case. I wasn't 80, but I felt like I was 80. So after a while, um, when they removed, I had a back brace, I had a collar, I had a, a TENS unit. A TENS unit is a machine where they electrocute your, your back so that you wouldn't feel the pain. So there was a lot of gadgets. I had physical therapy, chiropractor, acupuncture. It was very difficult. But I started walking without the cane and just living in pain every day. Here's my medical report here. <laughs> this is from Maui Medical um, Outpatient Clinic in Hawaii. Here on the screen, we're looking at this medical report from Maui Memorial Outpatient Clinic in Hawaii. It's a medical report for Lady Esther W. Magro. This is where she went with a chief complaint of chronic pain in the neck chronic pain in the lower back, with radiation into the right upper extremity and right lower extremity, with intermittent numbness in the right upper and right lower extremities. So here she was attended to by Dr. Ulo Joe, is a doctor of medicine there in the USA. So they decided to take an MRI of her cervical spine as indicated here. 
which showed that she has got cervical degenerative disc disease at C2 to C3 through C6 to C7. As indicated, they observed that at C4 to C5, there is moderate central canal narrowing with moderate to severe right-sided foraminal narrowing and moderate left foraminal narrowing. And at C5 to C6, they observed moderate central canal narrowing and severe right-sided and moderate to severe left-sided foraminal narrowing. Again, at C6 to C7, they observed mild central canal narrowing and moderate to severe right foraminal narrowing with moderate left foraminal narrowing. So a combination of this is what was causing her severe pain in her neck, pain in the back, all that was done under the care of her doctor, Dr. Uloth Joel, the doctor of medicine in USA, who confirms all this. So not too long ago, I, around December, I actually had a friend that I met on Facebook who <laughs> I actually wrote a prayer wick for us for something else that I was needing help for. And she reached out to me and she's from Kenya and we just became friends. And when I would tell her about my issues, she told me about Prophet Samuel Kakande, who I never heard of before. She told me to watch his videos, which I did, and I started seeing people with injuries very similar to mine. And I would watch video after video, almost 10 hours sometimes, and I would cry every time somebody got healed. And I knew in my mind what it meant to be free from that pain. I knew how much it, it meant to be, to see other people who said they never paid a coin. Now, one doctor said they would they would do my back surgery, but they wanted eighty thousand U.S. dollars, which I didn't have the money to do that, and they didn't even guarantee me that I would be healed. So I started tithing into the ministry for I actually don't even know how long now. I just was doing it because it made sense to me that. I would even see the prophet giving out money <laughs> to people. So I just thought, this man is giving to everyone and they're walking out. I see their medical report. I know that they're getting healed. So my heart just felt compelled to give here. I didn't know how I was going to get here because I have not a good sense of direction. I cannot find my way to my own mailbox. And I've never traveled before like that. The amazing thing is about God... <laughs> <laughs> is that he makes a way because I don't know if a lot of people know this, but everybody here probably faced some challenges in getting here. Everything wants to go wrong and it takes a lot of faith to go out and, and travel and do the things that you do. But God still makes a way and he provides for you. And so I told my friend who I met on Facebook who runs an orphanage, her name is Filda, that I was coming. Um, I was going to meet her in Kenya and then we would cross the border together so that I could see the man of God. So we got here and then um, when, I, when I sat in the, the seats, I was in so much pain because I had already been traveling. It took me five planes to get here. And I just was like, oh, God, you know, I'm hurting. So I was, I was glad nobody saw me, but I ended up actually on the ground behind. I was like, kind of like on the ground. And when the man of God came that day for the prayer, I didn't feel like electricity. I didn't feel electricity or anything. I didn't, I just, I, as soon as I got up, I, the pain was just gone. <laughs> The 17 years of pain. And it, while I was in that pain for 17 years, I was like, God, I don't remember what it's like to not be in pain. But after two days of being healed, I don't remember the pain. <laughs> I was like, what? what pain? So before I couldn't walk for very long, stand for very long, I couldn't sleep through the night. I couldn't lay on my stomach because my neck couldn't turn. And... Um, now, I'm going to model for you. I used to model for a little bit, but then I got fat. But now I can walk. <laughs> I can run. <laughs> I can hide. Here's me hiding. <laughs> and 
I'm healed. I can sit on a chair with ease. Before this, this was a nightmare, especially I would look at the chair and I would know. I was like, oh, this chair is my enemy. But I can sit comfortably through the service. And the one thing that I was really struggling with was I used to love to kneel down and pray. And I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't do that. And that was really hard for me because it felt like I couldn't humble myself before God. And now I can't do it without any problem. And the thing I used to love doing before the injury was I used to love to wake up like 2 o'clock in the morning to go out at the beaches to pray. And I couldn't, after I was injured, I would wake up at like 9 or 10 o'clock because I was in so much pain and I wouldn't sleep well in the night. The day after I got prayed for, I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was worshiping the Lord, and I was so grateful. I was like, and then this morning again, same time, um, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I get to spend time with God like I used to. I'm very thankful to God for my healing. I'm so grateful that... Prophet Samuel Kakande prayed for me. I could turn my neck. See that? Before I couldn't turn my neck like this. <laughs> I feel nothing pain. And when I would see people get healed, I used to wonder if they understood the cost. I mean, I'm sure the cost in Africa would probably be different for a surgery like this. But when we were learning about tithes and offerings yesterday, I thought, you know, the little that I feel like is my tithe, it doesn't, I walked away with the $80,000 healing from the Lord. <laughs> so you can never outgive God. So I just wanted to thank everybody here in Africa, in Uganda, I learned a lot. You guys really touched my heart, and I really want to communicate to anybody in the United States who's watching. You know, the, in all of Hawaii, anyone all over the world, in fact, the Bible says, do not give false testimony. Do not give false testimony. <laughs> Prophet Kakande is a man of God. God is in this house. <laughs> So when you come, come with respect. Come to give, not to just get. And never leave not wanting to remember where you got the blessings from. Yeah. I, <laughs> I give glory and honor to Jesus. And I thank Prophet Samuel Kakande for everything that he's doing. And I thank the ushers and everyone here serving at the Kakande ministry. We are very grateful for everything you guys do, for the thousands of people that come here every day. You work so hard. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the healer, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Give him praise. Thank you.
Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. <laughs>